Good day, Rust Skin Enjoyers. Hope everyone's doing all right. So, I was in the process and building up my newest Rust Workshop Skin Checks uh, collection. And as I look through my followed authors list, what do I see with my eyes? Scroll, scroll, scroll. Do you see it? Yes. The hoodie and pants have been submitted. Why non Jay has submitted the continuation of the pirate collection. Most notably, the next core piece. Hoodie and pants are right there in front of you people. And, well, you might be sitting there and saying, why? am I talking about this so much? Well, over the past few days, we've been greatly concerned about the amount of sales that the Pirate Tier 3 has had. And, uh, well, if I show you current day, June 5, <laughs> yeah, this is quite a lot. We have three more days of this being in the Rust Store. And this has already got 42,000 sales. This has got over 35,000 sales. That's fairly ridiculous. But as I have probably already mentioned in the past few days, whether it was my Rust or Rotation video where we talked about how this potentially might have oversaturation, the predictions video, which was recorded a few hours later, which was showing signs of this is selling far too much too quickly. And then 48 hours later, we talk about how there very likely will be problems with the likes of oversaturation because there's far too many sales. But what I did also mention was there was very likely going to still be some positives for this if we do see continuations, if we do see new core pieces. And lo and behold, as we see over here, we now have the hoodie and the pants in the pipeline. And we have already discussed about how when a new core piece appears, the pre-existing core pieces tend to spike in demand and spike in price. We have that new positive to talk about. So in this video, I thought, you know what? For archival purposes, you know, we can keep track of the pirate collection and its development. I thought I should probably make a few videos keeping track of all of it because it's going to be helpful for people in the future. I wouldn't be surprised in the future if we have another budget blackout or another budget whiteout or another budget forest raiders, you know? So people in the future are going to want to kind of get a good insight for if there's something that's very in demand, how did it progress? Well, I've got a great example to start following. Makes sense? And what I'm probably going to go ahead and do is I'm going to put this in one of my playlists called Useful Rust uh, Investing Videos. So Helpful Rust Skin Investing Videos is right here. Basically, every single video that you see in this list is going to teach you something of notable use. Like So basically, I know I have my Rust Economy 101 series. But this is to get people introduced and understand how the Rust Economy works. But in this playlist, there's something a little bit extra that you will understand and learn as you go through. Like, I'm talking about the development of the uh, Skull Killer set right here. So this, we've already talked about, a con uh, 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 we've already tracked a collection before. Do you understand? So sit back and relax, people. I know I'm going to be talking quite a lot, but this is going to be helpful for you to get a good understanding in regards to whether or not you want to actually jump in and buy these or just do a buy order. Make sense? All right. Okay. So let's just get the context that we've already mentioned before out of the way and then we'll start to really consider what we're going to do with from here and now so gentlemen this immediately when we first looked at it we thought okay budget blackout and this is something people are always keeping an eye out for because blackout collection is fairly expensive it's one of the most notable and go-to sets that people buy out and want to use and uh well just get a good look at it <laughs> 25 26 dollars for the pants 17 dollars for the hoodies uh, blackout chest plates five dollars face mask is five dollars the kilt is eighteen dollars so yeah we're always wanting to keep an eye out for a potential budget version because that's what people like but the problem is we saw this nice but it was selling at 99 cents and that's a problem in itself because it was so accessible to many people loads of people can buy tons of these at 99 cents and that's quite literally caused this problem or had a helping of causing this problem so we're worried about oversaturation and oversaturation is when there's far too many people or rather let's put it this way this is genuine demand and this is supply right now because loads of people looked at this and thought, oh, wow, this is going to be an easy profit. Loads of people didn't buy some just for themselves. They probably bought an extra 30 or 50 or 100 uh, sets of these skins because they want to sell them for a profit. And when there's far too many people that do that, you get very high supply. And the problem is, is you might have your genuine demand, the people that actually want to buy it and use it, and the supply might not be around equal. No, no, no. It might be 
it might be a lot higher up and that's a problem because with that excess stock people are going to be competing with uh, with each other to try and sell it on the steam market or on third party sites and when they get competitive they start undercutting each other and if the price keeps going down and down and down because they keep undercutting each other the value of the skin suffers doesn't it so this was one of the concerns that we were worried about when we first looked at this and then when we were in the predictions video we could see so many sales were happening and in a 48 hour analysis we were, we were like oh no it looks like it's too much but at the very least Two days later, since that full chain error analysis, things have slowed down a bit. So this is okay. And what I also mentioned was when we potentially do, a, do see a continuation of the collection, most notably a new core piece appear, well, which we have right here, we tend to see something happen which happens routinely all the time. And that is, and we will use the Reptile Hunter once more. Reptile Hunter was literally accepted last week, the hoodie in the pants. But the most notable thing out of this was it already had tier 3. And quite literally, we're going through the exact same scenario with pirates. So just get a, look, get a good look at this. When this came out, it was doing all right. It was fine, but... When this was accepted, both of these pieces spiked in demand and spiked in price. And now they're very nicely comfortably in the positive. And hey, overall, that kind of looks like a pretty decent uh, budget Forest Raiders. So it's starting to gain some traction there. And everything worked out quite all right. The amount of sales seems to be fairly close. I mean, this is like 10% more compared to this. So that's okay. That's another thing that we also had to take into consideration. Oversaturation within a set a collection so that would be something we worry about next time if we do see this potentially being accepted if it does happen you'll you'll, you'll see it all for yourself so anyway this appearing caused the pre-existing core piece to jump up in price if we see this potentially being accepted you will potentially see this spike in demand and spike in price and now people will think very comfortably oh, we very likely will get a full set of a budget blackout oh yeah Surely that'll go up in price. And I don't blame people for thinking like that, but I'm getting the feeling with the amount of sales we had, we might suffer in the short term, but we will eventually uh, succeed in the long term. The profits, the delicious, you know, those delicious profits that we crave, we want, we desire. So when you pair that with the fact that when you look at the pirate collection, Y9J has been very successful with it. Pretty much every single one of his pirate skin submissions has been accepted. Well, here's the first, here's the next two, and they've only just been submitted. So, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen? What do you reckon's going to happen? <laughs> I get the feeling Face Punch likes it a lot. A lot of people definitely like it. You can see loads of people discussing it here. Mister Y Nine J, look how popular you are. <laughs> so, yeah, this is now potentially appearing on the horizon. This whole scenario that we're going through, a budget blackout, this isn't the first time it's happened. In fact, last year, it happened twice. So let's go look back at those two skin collections and see how they progressed. Starting off with the Dragon Rage set, which came out during the beginning, or <coughs> near the beginning of the year. So in March of 2022, we started off the Dragon Rage set with the hoodie in the pants. And I will just give you some nice bit of context, because this is definitely going to be something we need to be aware of. When you look at the amount of people playing Rust at the moment, if we scroll down, when you kind of compare it with the likes of 2021 and 2022 and this year, you'll notice there's quite a lot more people playing in terms of averages compared to the previous years. We're growing. The game is doing good. It's doing all right. So I get the feeling that we could probably sit here and say half the reason why we see so many more sales compared to previous years is because more people play in the game, more people are invested into skins and whatnot. So with more people playing the game, there's higher genuine demand. And of course, there's more people thinking, oh, I could make a profit out of this skin. I'll buy some excess stock and whatnot. Makes sense. So with the player counts increasing, you're going to see more skins being bought over time. And well, just to give you a nice bit of context, last year, 28,000 sales each for both of these skins. It kind of looked like there was potentially going to be oversaturation. But guess what? These two did around 28,000 sales each. The next core piece to come out was tier 3. This did 33,600. This did 38,800. Yeah, that was more than that by quite a significant amount. So this spiked up in demand and, of course, spiked in price when this appeared. And then we had tier two eventually appearing and it went up even higher. So this worked out very well by being the first core piece to be accepted. Hey, guess what? Pirate 
tier three is the first core piece to be accepted because da, 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 it's, it's, it's potentially coming. So not only will we potentially see a spike in demand, a spike in price when the hoodie and pants appear, but what, what happens when tier two appears? Oh, well, there you go. Exact same thing. Oh, my water. Oh, no, I've just built water everywhere. Well, <laughs> I, I, I've, got, I've got to focus. I've got to focus. I've got to talk about these skins. I'm a rust skin enjoyer, just like you. So, oh, God, it's everywhere. Quick, get the towel. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> oh, no. Anyway, so um, basically, um, I'm dedicated, right? I'm dedicated. I've got to get all this information out to you so you don't feel too worried or too concerned about the uh, upcoming developments. But you should also be concerned enough to know that not everything is a guarantee. We don't know if this is going to be accepted. It could, it might, it possibly, but there's no guarantee it will definitely happen. But anyway, I'm just kind of theorizing if things do roll out quite nicely, how might things develop? And of course, how are we going to end up approaching this? Because like I said, this wasn't the only set. This wasn't the only budget blackout set. We also had black gold that appeared quite later in the year. So yes, this is the black gold set, starting off with the hoodie and pants. But as you can see here, this sold at like $2.49. That's something I should bring up to you. This sold at $2.49, $1.99, $2.99, $2.49. The prices did change a bit. The prices did change a bit. And well, this selling at 99 cents was doing it no favors because, well, you know, it's too, as I said, too accessible. Far too many people would jump in and buy these in excess. And, you know, too many people do that. No for saturation. But anyway, this was a comfortable amount of sales. But as you might notice, it didn't really go up in price that much, this hoodie. And these pants, they did better. They did all right. Face mask, it's up to $4 after selling at $2.49. So this is where I do kind of bring up that a lot of people like to mix and match. Not everybody can afford a full set of black uh, blackout. But they might want to mix it up with the likes of Dragon Rage. They might want to mix it up with the likes of Black Gold. And with this being $11, it's not too surprising because, well, if this is selling at $18.5, maybe people will think, you know what, maybe I'm just better off buying the kilt here. <laughs> it's still black and it still blends in somewhat nicely. So, yeah, you know, if you're on a bit of a budget, you've got to make some options. And, well, if this develops quite nicely, well, maybe people are going to start looking at the likes of this. And, well, gentlemen, how about we do a nice quick comparison? Do you like the looks of this? Or would you rather stick with your... Um, let's just quickly see. $17. So, $43. So, $43. Or, potentially in the future, 2 to $4. Hmm. What do you think? This or this? This or this? I'm sure a lot of people are immediately going to look at that and think, well, that's going to be really nice. I should go buy tons of them. And that's where we will potentially be doing our second video of the pirate collection. Because as I have mentioned with the likes of Reptile Hunter, we were very concerned whether the amount of sales here was going to line up nicely with this. And it only did 2,000 more, which is about 10% more than here. So that seemed to be quite all right. In the long term, that's going to work out very nicely. All right. If it, if it did like elite crate levels of madness so let's just quickly show you this <laughs> 16,000 sales average here 30,000 plus that's far too much in comparison to this and that's why this suffers so that's not something we need to be concerned about now that's if this is accepted in the future so now we sit here and we are going to talk about the pirate tier 3 what are we going to do so I have thrown out a lot of context at you. We know why this sold a lot. Budget blackout, cheap price, loads of people jumped in. There's one extra thing I should probably show to you, and that was a certain skin that came up not too long ago that had very, 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 very high demand, part of a well-established whiteout collection. Uh, yeah, whiteout boots apparently have done over 100,000 sales. And it shows. It shows. It shows. So yeah, it's got 10,000 listings on the Steam market. And when you look at all of the stock, you see problems here. This this is this is absurd, right? We're not close to anywhere like this, but you will still see similar problems. So the main thing I want to show you off with this is the fact that because so many of these were bought and so many people trying to sell them, they are building up huge resistances, big walls. This skin can't really flourish. It's not going to really make that much profit because all of this is here. You've got to go through all of this for it to eventually potentially ever reach the likes of two dollars there's so much it has to go through so if you are wondering hmm should i buy some of the likes of the uh, pirate tier three just know if you are going to be buying more of this you're going to probably add to the potential problems we might see here too much stock in circulation 
and the demand simply isn't there to keep buying it out and keep the price up. But in the in regards to this, it probably will be hard stuck at around a dollar because there is enough demand that it will keep the price up to here, but it's not going to really go anywhere. It's probably going to be stuck around a dollar for maybe maybe forever. So could we potentially see something very similar happen with the likes of this? Just no. I won't be surprised if you see quite a lot of stock appearing on the Steam market when this becomes marketable. You have to understand, this most likely will be flourishing, becoming a much better pro uh, profit, when we do potentially see the likes of this being accepted, when we do see the potentially the likes of some Tier 2 being accepted, or rather, maybe when we hit August or post-Christmas time, because that's when we expect to see a lot more people playing the game. So, if you can remember, December, January, February, we had a lot of people playing Rust around then, and the prices of all Rust skins went up very, very, very nicely. I feel like that's probably the best time to consider selling this. But as I said, as I said, the spike in demand, the spike in price of this will happen when we see Hoodie and Pants or Tier 2 happen. And you might sit there and say, oh, but the price is looking good already. Well, if the money's good to you, consider selling then, all right? So, yeah, that is the situation. That is all the context I thought I could show off to you. And gentlemen, please don't forget, in regards to anticipating and waiting for a uh, set to develop, I do have a playlist. Uh, I, I do have a specific video to uh, show off to you, and it's Rust Economy 101 Speculation and Anticipation. This is me keeping track of the progress of the Copper Collection that came out last year, and I talk about the very nice positives that I've just sat here and spoke to you about, and I also bring up all the potential negatives. You do see some people throwing a ton of stock on the Steam market and causing problems and wars and resistance, and that's not good. So this really does go more in depth in regards to talking about that, because what we see here could potentially happen to the likes of the pirate collection it's useful and it's helpful i'm talking about helpful videos another batch of helpful videos that i've already mentioned helpful ruskin investing videos this video will be part of this batch and yeah every single video here teaches you something extra that i haven't been able to talk about in the past and uh this video right here it's us keeping track of the development of a very in demand and notable set and in the future, newer people are probably going to learn from this video as well. So thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And Mr. Y9J, what's next? Um, will you be taking a break? I wouldn't be surprised. He'll probably take a week or two break and then release tier two. Um, so in the meantime, um, where's my parrot rock? Where's my cutlass sword? Where's my captain's hat? Where's my captain's jacket? Come on, Mr. Y9J. Come on, where is it? <laughs> so... The final verdict. Personally, if you can afford it, right, if you can afford it, maybe it's worth jumping in and taking a risk and buying some of these. But don't forget, don't. we've also got to want to do the buy orders. And yes, I did this with Reptile Hunter. I looked at it and I thought, you know what? I think I'd rather just do a very strong buy order. And lo and behold, if we just go over to here, duh, 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 if I type in Reptile Hunter, and I assure you, every single Reptile Hunter skin that you see here, I bought on buy order. I didn't buy it from the Rust store. In fact, I already have... Reptile Hunter hoodie and pants that I bought from a builder as well, which you can see right here. I did not request 87, I requested 88, and you can go see my buy orders when it all happened. Actually, no, you can't, because I don't record that. Well, just know it's all from buy orders, so yeah. You could just probably do, like, maybe a 90 cent buy order on both of these. Get them for 9 cents cheaper and see how it happens. See how it rolls out. Yeah, that's uh, that's an option. But again, if you can afford it, yeah, jump in. Go do, go do Go actually purchase some if you really want to. But remember, the more you purchase, the more you add to the, the, to the overall circulation and uh, the more potential problems we might see in the future. So you have to really consider what you're going to do. I'm sorry for bringing loads of worry and doubt and concern, but I want to make sure that you all succeed. You all understand how this is rolling out. And uh, yeah, I try my best. All right, I try my best to help you. I try my best to give you all the context, all the understanding, all the potential cons and pros and positives and negatives. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you, you get the idea. You get the idea. So <sighs> what's going to happen next? Will we actually see this being accepted? You can go to the Rust Workshop right now and you can go vote for the likes of the Pirate Hoodie and Pants and we shall see i kind of wouldn't be surprised if it's accepted and then we'll start worrying about will the hoodie and pants sell as much as the tier three <gasps> all right guys thank you all for watching i greatly appreciate it have a lovely day have a lovely week and we'll see what happens over the course of this month catch you all later goodbye